congratulations you've made the decision to start learning how to use Excel or at least learn what it is and what it's used for when I first encountered Excel I thought it looked like a pretty boring application and if you haven't had any experience with it it may seem like there's not much going on when you first look at it little do you know there are almost endless possibilities of what you can do with Excel and here I'll give you an introduction as to what Excel is and some of the general information you'll need when going through the other video lessons. So first when you open up any new workbook you'll see that it comes up with book one at the top. Then it has this large gridded area and inside this area you'll see that there are columns and if you click on these it'll highlight the whole column which have letters and there are also rows which go from left to right which have numbers. The columns start with A and proceed alphabetically upwards and rows follow numerically downward. As a beginner there are certainly more rows and columns than you'll ever have to use. One way to see how many there are is to hit the end key which should be near your home and page up and page down buttons on your keyboard. If you hit the end key then you'll see down bottom left it says end mode which allows you to use the arrow keys to move to the edge of the data range. So if I'm in end mode and I push down arrow, you'll see that it brings me all the way down to the maximum row of 1,048,576. If you hit end again and push up, it'll go back to the beginning. And then I'm going to hit end again and hit right to see what the maximum column is, which is XFD. And the way the columns work, it will increase from A to Z, then start over at A, 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 B, A, C, A, D, and continue upward. So XFD, where it ends, is very far to the right. So you shouldn't have any problems with the amount of columns or rows that you're using. So each one of these little boxes is referred to as a cell. You'll see, as I click on each one of them, this name box in the top left will tell me the name of the cell, which is always the column reference first, and then the row reference. Similar to the game Battleship, if you've ever played that, but if you're ever confused as to which cell you're on, it will tell you in the top left. Each one of these cells lives on a worksheet. You'll see that by default, Excel opens with three worksheets. All are identical, with nothing in them, just a blank canvas to work with. If you right-click this sheet, you'll see you have some additional options. What we'll do is first show you how to insert a spreadsheet by clicking insert and you'll see worksheet is there. You'll see that sheet 4 now is created. You can also click delete to get rid of any sheets that you don't need anymore. So I will get rid of sheet 4, sheet 3, sheet 2 and feel free to follow along at home. If you don't have Excel you can use Google Docs which has most of the functionality and is free but all of these lessons are specifically tailored to Excel. This is just to give you an introduction. If you right click, you can also rename the sheet, or you can also do that by double clicking the name here. And you'll see that it highlights it, and you can type My First Sheet. So now that we have My First Sheet, we can decide what we want to do with that. I'll go through a quick example of keeping track of some personal finances using Excel to show you the difference between formulas and hard-coded values as well as some of the formatting options. So we'll start in cell A2. We'll expand the column a little bit and we'll type personal finances. And you'll see as I type into the cell you can also see up in the formula bar it also says what you type. And when you hit enter that'll now show up. You can highlight the cell and up top you'll have some different formatting options. Like say you wanted to put it in bold and maybe increase the font size which you can do by either selecting it here or clicking up or down next to it which will increase the font size. So we'll increase the font size a bit make this a little bit smaller. If you have a value that doesn't fit in the cell it will extend across as long as there's nothing else written next to it. If I had something here it would cut that off and I just hit control Z to undo that. You can also mess around with the formatting options. You can underline it. There's also, if I stretch this out enough, I could use different borders, like put a box around it and let's say center it. But none of this 
is really necessary for what we're doing. I just want to show you a few of the formatting options. Up here in the top left, you can see that there's an undo button. You could do control Z like I did earlier, or you can click this. So if you click through that, we'll bring it back to just when it was personal finances. So the way that we will track our personal finances is we will have first a starting amount, so bank account value and this would be how much you have in the bank account today since we'll start tracking it from today so let's just say you're, you're doing pretty well and you have ten thousand dollars in the bank you'll notice that I've only had hard-coded values so far so anything I type into the cell shows exactly as it should there are slight differences between what's in the formula bar up top and what's in the cell you'll see that this one shows a comma to indicate thousands which isn't showing in the formula bar another thing you can do is put a formula into the cell so let's say instead of ten thousand dollars we knew that we were depositing ten checks for a thousand dollars each you could put equal sign and that means you're typing in a formula and you could do ten then an asterisk which means to multiply by and we'll do one thousand and when I hit enter you'll see that it still shows up as ten thousand like it did before but in the formula bar it'll actually show the formula used to generate that and so if you get into more complicated formulas what's up here can be extremely different from what's showing in the cell and indicates whether what you're looking at is a hard-coded value that won't change or a formula that may change based on what happens in the sheet then let's say below we wanted to start putting in expenses or income so that we know how much money we have at any point so let's say we had um, groceries for the week and I'll use a formula so let's say there are three shopping trips at forty dollars a piece at forty dollars a piece and I will actually put a negative in front of it since we're losing money and one thing you can do is highlight your area and change the formatting of what kind of value is inside of it so you'll see up here it says that it's formatted like a number if I click on one of these other ones you'll see that it says general so you can change the format of a cell to indicate what type of information is inside it if you click this drop down list here you'll see all of the default settings that you can choose so let's say we wanted to use currency since we're talking about dollars but you can also use this for dates times percentages so when I click currency you'll see that it added two decimal places and a dollar sign in front of the text and again what is in the cell hasn't changed it's just the format of what's being displayed I'll show you another example using the date so let's say date updated and I'll make this a little bit bigger and I will bold it now if in here we wanted to put today's date we could enter today's date in a few different ways let's say 11 slash 4 slash 2012 since today is November 4th, 2012, and I hit enter. And when I go back, you'll see that it clicked it as a date. If you look in here, it would be what was referred to as a short date. If I wanted to show it as a long date, I could click here, and these number signs means that your cell is not wide enough to display. So I will go up top and extend it. And you'll see that as you extend the columns, it'll tell you how wide or how high each one is in both pixels and in a decimal point value also if you double click the edge of the column it will automatically fit your text into it by increasing the width so you'll see it says Sunday November 4th 2012 and notice in the top left that the formula bar indicates what I typed in and since it knows that that is a date it's showing up in the cell as Sunday November 4th 2012 instead of writing 11 4 2012 I can put equals and use the today function which is just today with an open and a closed parentheses and if I hit enter you'll see that since the cell is still formatted as a long date it will show the long date but in the formula bar it just says equals today and that would update each day as you open up the file and if it recalculates it will show you a new day so if I left that cell in there I would never need to change this date updated as long as it's updated every time I open the book. An interesting thing is if you go to general on dates, 
you'll see this number value which is the number of days that have passed since January 0, 1900. So if you ever see a date that you have in this very weird manner of in the 40,000s, you'll know that it's actually the formatting that's incorrect and if you change the formatting it'll show up as a date. So I'll make this a little bit smaller and then we'll add a few more expenses so gas let's put in five hundred dollars and that should be a negative and school supplies let's say negative two hundred and other bills let's say two thousand and we'll throw rent in there let's say twelve hundred and now remaining money so the way to calculate this remaining dollar amount you could either do equal sign and then point to each of the cells so let's say the bank account plus grocery amount plus gas plus school supplies plus other bills plus rent and you'll see that that shows up as equals B4 plus B5 plus B6 each of these referring to the cell by where the column and row intersect. So if I hit enter here, it'll tell me the remaining amount of money that we have. Let me just put a little bit of formatting on here so I will bold the top amount. I will put a bottom border. Then for remaining money, I will do the same. Bold it. And then I'll use this top and double bottom border because it's a little more exciting and you'll see right there we can relatively quickly track our bank account going down with various expenses now as you get more and more data it could be very tedious to add an additional cell to this formula so there are certain formulas in Excel which can be used to add many numbers together the most popular one is the sum formula so instead if I want to do equals sum with an open parenthesis and this is how all formulas if they're using a function are written you put the name of the function so this is the sum function then you put a open parenthesis and then you enter information related to that function some have a different syntax and the syntax is just just means the way the formula is set up so for a sum formula you give it a bunch of numbers and it will add them together for other formulas you might have to give it different criteria like if you're losing using a lookup formula you might have to tell it which value to look up and where to look it up so depending on the formula you may need different criteria put into it and I will show you how to use the insert function in a second and I'll also show you where a list of all the functions are on my site so for the sum formula once you have an open parenthesis you can just go ahead and click we'll go from B4 down to B9 and you'll see that it takes the starting cell and the ending cell and puts a colon in between them and that's what's known as a range so it's taking the range B4 to B9 all the cells that are highlighted with those crawling ants around it and that's what it's going to sum and so I will put an end parentheses there and when I hit enter you'll see that we get the same answer but it's a much more simple formula than having to add each one together and if you had hundreds of, of cells that you wanted to add it would be much quicker to use a sum from the beginning to the end than to have to individually add each item to your formula now I'm just realizing that I put rent in with one too many zeros so I will go into the formula bar and delete one of them since we were supposed to have a positive bank account amount and the good thing about using a formula with a range is that let's say you wanted to insert an expense or income here so let's say we right click row 7 hit insert and let's say you got an unexpected bonus that week of let's say one thousand twenty dollars just to bring us up to an even seven thousand in our bank account when I hit enter you'll see that this formula had automatically updated to be B4 to B10 so that it would still include the full range and if you did this with entering only individual cells it wouldn't have updated because that new cell would not have been included in your original formula one thing that you can do is use the insert function feature so let's say I did equals sum and I forgot 
how I was supposed to use this formula, I could go up to this insert function box and click on it. And since you already have a function partially written, it will ask you to put in the arguments of the function. In this case, multiple numbers. So it says adds all the numbers in a range of cells. Now it says number one here, but instead you could click this cell selector and go ahead and select that whole area that we just talked about and hit enter and then you go hit OK and that formula is there for you. If you had no formula there to start, let's go to a blank cell here and hit the insert function feature and you could either search for the function up top by typing a description of what you wanted to do. You can look at the most recently used or functions by category. You'll see that some of the functions I frequently use are already showing up down below and I will choose the sum function and hit OK and then it would bring up the box and actually if you already do it below an area it will try to guess what you want to sum and so it selected the entire range of numbers above it I'll hit cancel but if you ever want to use a function and you're not sure what it's called or how to set it up the insert function feature can be very important especially at the beginning until you know how to write formulas very well yourself so I've shown you a little bit about the ribbon via the formatting section but up here at the top of Excel is what's called the ribbon there are different categories for different things you might be using like insert to bring in tables pictures charts page layout has to do a lot with the way that it's formatted in terms of especially printing or how you're viewing the spreadsheet formulas have a lot to do with inserting formulas naming ranges a lot of the stuff I go over in additional videos but I just want to let you know that there are all sorts of different features that you can access from the ribbon including if you look at the home page mine is set up a little different than yours because I have this custom ribbon over here called Ben which I show how to make in the five powerful tips video but essentially you can go ahead and explore these options and see what you have whenever you want to try something that you're not sure exactly how to do and for the last part of this video I just want to show you how you can use the master workbook along with the course and a few examples of spreadsheets that I've created throughout the course which you'll be taught throughout the lessons so if you go to my website and click on master workbook at the top of the site it will show you the latest version of the Excel Exposure Master Workbook so I will click on that and it will download then I open her up and you might have to hit enable editing at the top since it's not a workbook that you created and you'll see here I have many links to different parts of the workbook if you go to the list of all Excel functions and click on that you'll see that it brings you to a listing of every function in Excel the description about it and the syntax which I mentioned earlier which is just how the formula is set up I've categorized them into different categories compatibility date and time financial logical and I go through these in more depth for the experience level one functions on the site if you go to this function examples tab you'll see that in each category I have a video where I go over each of the various functions related to that category like date and time or text functions and there are also plenty of examples in this workbook of how you can set up information in certain tables like here is some product order history for a company and I use that in a few videos to go over how to use pivot tables if I push over to the right further you'll see that there are additional sheets with various example templates just so you can see the various aspects of how Excel works. So feel free to download the master workbook online and use it to go along with the lessons because since my videos are really meant to show you all of the important aspects of Excel that I use in my daily life and make my work go by much faster, get done more efficiently, and allows me to be proud of what I create. So I hope you enjoy this and do the same.